Welcome back to another learning series with Mr. Knight. When you look at organisms, you will realize that there are certain traits that are more prominent than others. In fact, over time, you may notice new traits are being developed. These development of new traits may be noticeable in animals and also in plants. Today, we're going to explain all of this by looking at the types of genetic dominance. Now, genetic dominance refers to the ability of an allele, which is a variant form of a gene, to mask or overrides the expression of another allele. There are three types of genetic dominance. They are complete dominance, incomplete dominance, and co-dominance. A point to note is that complete dominance is described as Mendelian genetics, which means that it follows a certain pattern of segregation. It also explains that the offspring will exhibit the trait of one of the parents. It also assumes that the offspring must be of one of two possibilities, either of the dominant or the recessive trait. Incomplete and codominant, they are described as non-Mendelian genetics, which means that the offspring can exhibit traits that were not seen in their parents. Now let's look at complete dominance first. But however, before I get into the details of this, I wanted to note that when we talk about genetic dominance, we are mainly observing the heterozygous form, which means when the two different alleles meet. And the result of meet of the result when these two different alleles meet, we look at that type of expression to explain genetic dominance. So, complete dominance is when an, is when one allele is dominant over the other, and the dominant allele totally masks the expression of the recessive allele. And so, it's important to note that the dominant trait is expressed in the heterozygous and also the homozygous dominant forms. Now this is an example of complete dominance. We're going to cross two different flower, one red, one white. In this example, we're going to take white to be recessive. Therefore, for this flower to be white, it has, two, has a genotype of two lowercase letters, in this case, we call it homozygous recessive. And for this red flower, it could be two possibilities. But for this example, we're going to take it to be homozygous dominant. If you do this cross, you will realize the offspring, they will be heterozygous dominant. And so if the offspring is heterozygous dominant, then it will exhibit the dominant trait coming from a dominant flower or the dominant parent. So since it, since it contains an uppercase R, then it must be red since uppercase R is red. Now let's say we take this a little bit further and we cross two heterozygous plants. Now the two heterozygous plants, we could use a Punnett square to show the results. And in this section, remember row by column, we will have two uppercase R's. If we take this section, row by column, and remember we write the uppercase first. And so here we'll have an uppercase R and a lowercase R. This section, row and column, we have uppercase and lowercase. In this section, we have row and column, so the row with the column, we get two lowercase r's. So by this result, you will realize the uppercase r are present in three sections. So therefore, those three sections will result in possibilities of red flowers, 
while this section here has no uppercase r so therefore this will result in a possibility of a white flower but let's analyze these results in terms of genotype and phenotype so the genotype possibilities will be that there's a 25 percent chance of getting a homozygous dominant flower there's a 50 percent chance of getting heterozygous flower so these two two out of four 50 percent heterozygous flower and there's a 25 percent chance of getting an homozygous recessive flower so therefore the genotype ratio will be a one to two to one let's think about the phenotype results these three three out of four which gives 75 percent chance of getting a red flower and only 25 percent chance of getting a white flower which give us a ratio of three to one now let's look at incomplete dominance and this is where things will get a little bit more interesting now in complete dominance this is when the dominant allele does not completely mask the effects of the recessive allele so there is what they call a blending of the dominant and the recessive alleles so blending means they're going to go together mix to get something new so we put different ingredients in a blender and you blend you result in something new maybe a smoothie or a shake now a point to note is that a new phenotype is being expressed in the heterozygous form and remember we are focusing on the heterozygous form so let's take for example we have the white flower with the red flower when they both cross what we'll get as a result is a pink flower. So the heterozygous form result in a pink flower because these two flowers, the red and the white, will blend. And remember, this is only for incomplete dominance. So for examination purposes, notice if a question is stating for complete dominance or incomplete dominance or co-dominance. If there's no statement of a type of dominance, then you assume that it is complete dominance, just to make a note of that. And let's say we cross two heterozygous flower together. What will we get? So taking two heterozygous flower, which means that they are two pink flowers, in this section we'll get two uppercase R's. This section we get uppercase and lowercase this section we get uppercase and lowercase as well and in this section we will get two lowercase letters now think about the possibilities that we'll get right here remember only the heterozygous will be pink as a clue right so what you think will be right here so there it will be a red flower these two will be pink and this one will be white the genotype possibilities 25% homozygous dominant, 50% heterozygous dominant, 25% homozygous recessive, which give us a ratio as 1 to 2 to 1 as before in the previous example. But look at the phenotypic possibilities now, which are going to be very interesting comparing to the first one. So if you cross two heterozygous flower, in this case they will be pink because it's incomplete dominance you get a 25% chance of getting a red flower. So two pink flowers could produce a red. There will also be a 50% chance of getting pink flowers and only 25% chance of getting a white flower. So a pink flower could produce three different possibilities. And so you get a ratio of a 1 to 2 to 1 in the phenotype ratio. Let's look at codominance. Now, codominance, this is when both alleles are expressed in the heterozygous form. So, both of them are expressing because neither is dominant over the other. And so, in this case, there is no blending. And a point to note that sometimes the word mixing is used in codominance, which I don't particularly like because mixing can be confused with blending. So, I prefer you take note and just simply say that both alleles none of them are dominant over the other and there is no blending 
which means both will be expressed. So let's look at the example. We, we're going to start with a white flower crossing with a red flower. And what you get as a result will be a red and white flower. Now, a point to note, since we're going to use two different letters in this case, what we're going to use is the trait letter. So we're looking at color of petals. So we use C and then we put the alleles on top of these C. So we use them as superscript on the C's. So the, the uppercase C's, they are using to present the trait that you're looking at. And remember that either or either, they are not dominant over the other, right? And so if we use R for red and W for white, but the idea is that if you notice, the C's are there to express it. But I'm going to show you a different way you could use it, right? There's no, there's no problem in ignoring the C's. And so in this case, if we cross these two, we'll get heterozygous form will be CR and CW, which means that the resulting flower will have red and white being expressed. It could be mainly white with some white it could be mainly red with some white spots or it could be white with red spots or half could be red half could be white so the, there are various ways that the red and white could be expressed but the idea is that they are expressed together now let's take two of the heterozygous plant and put them together and look at the possibilities this one going to be very interesting to see the results that you'll get so in this section, again, you're going to get two uppercase R's. This one you're going to get uh, uppercase R and uppercase W, because remember, there's two dominant allele. You could put the C's on them. All right, you don't have to, but you can put the C's on them to show exactly what you're doing or the trait that you're looking at. And then in this one, going to be uppercase R and uppercase W. In this one, going to be two W's. Now, the genotype possibility here, notice what they get as a result. We're going to look at the phenotype just a second, but let's get the genotype possibilities. So in the genotype possibility, you get a 25% homozygous dominant red, and you also get a 50% heterozygous, and you get a 25% homozygous recessive. So in total, they are 50% homozygous, but I want to specify by saying homozygous dominant for red, and homozygous recessive for white. But you can add these two percentages together to say that they are 50% homozygous. Right, but do not say recessive nor dominant if you put them together now. And so the, f the ratio will be a 1 to 2 to 1, or it could be a 1 to 1 depending on how you explain the homozygous forms. And then the phenotype possibilities will be 25% chance of getting a red flower from a red and white, two red and white flowers. There's a 50% chance to get red and white, and there's only 25% chance of getting a white. And so the phenotype ratio will be a 1 to 2 to 1. So now you have seen the different possibilities in the genetic dominance and the different dominance. So you can review and go back and look and check again to and compare them. They're very interesting to see the possibilities. Of course, in reality, these types of dominances, what you may see, different things may be popping up in different organisms. All right, so it was fun being with you today. Um, we are now at the end of the lesson. Um, if you decide to see more videos like these, just simply subscribe. See you in the next lesson.